Over the next few lessons, we'll learn about a few more widgets from the Flutter SDK. To begin, create a new Flutter project either from the terminal or using the IDE itself as done in the earlier lessons. Name the project More Widgets. Once done, remove the default code in main.dart and replace it with an empty main method as you see on the screen right now. Let's create the widget that would be launched when our app is launched. Let's call this the my app widget and wrap it in the run app method. To create the my app widget, we need to create a class called my app that extends from a certain widget. For the purpose of this tutorial, let's go with a stateless widget. We can change it to a stateful widget later if needed. We can do this by extending the stateless widget class and then overriding the build method that's required whenever we extend this class as learned earlier. Next, let's add the material app widget a scaffold with an app bar and a container widget to get the structure of the first page of our app ready. Now let's run our app to confirm that we have set everything up correctly. Usually these would be your first steps whenever you create a new Flutter project, but doing such a trivial thing can become quite boring and a little time consuming quickly. That's where Live Templates come in. Live Templates is a utility offered by most of the modern IDEs these days, using which you can create shortcuts for commonly written code to insert them quickly in your current project. Flutter has a few predefined Live Templates. One of the Live Templates is for the stateless widget where you can just type in STLESS and the IDE gives you the body of a stateless widget. This was added to IntelliJ automatically when you installed the Flutter plugin for IntelliJ in an earlier lesson. Similar to a stateless widget, you can create a stateful widget too by typing in STFUL. Let's call our stateful widget login page. Notice how typing login page automatically fills the same name for the state class associated with the stateful widget. Moreover, the state class is marked as private as represented by the underscore in front of it, just as the state class should be. Another handy flutter shortcut is to convert an existing stateless widget into a stateful widget. You can easily do this using the widget menu shortcut and with just a couple of taps you have your widget converted. The same can also be done using the icon on the left. To see a list of available live templates, head over to IntelliJ's preferences. Then search for Live Templates. Here, you'll see Live Templates from different frameworks and plugins or those that come installed with IntelliJ by default. Under the Flutter category, you'll see a list of existing Live Templates including the stateless and stateful ones that we just used. Since we always have to delete the default code whenever we want to create a new project and then set up the main method with a default widget like we just did, let's create our own live template for that. To begin, copy the stateless live template. Give it a suitable name such as default code and suitable description that would be visible when we are using this live template. We'll use the current code that we have in the project for this live template. Press OK to save this template as it is. 
copy the code that we have and head back into preferences. This time I chose to do so by using the shortcut for opening preferences, which is the command key followed by the comma key. Paste this copied code in the template text section. Don't worry too much about the other settings for now. You can choose to play with these as per your convenience. Finally, press OK to save changes. Now, whenever you type in default code anywhere in a Flutter project, you'll be able to access the live template. Notice how you also see the description of the live template on the right end. Other than regular day-to-day -day coding, live templates are extremely useful during live demos as well. You can always keep snippets of codes as a backup using live templates just in case your demo goes wrong somewhere. To make our template a little more customizable, replace the hard-coded widget class name with a custom variable called name. As seen in the stateless and stateful widget live templates, a custom variable called name is being used to receive input from the user instead of hard-coded values such as my app in our case. Let's use the same format for our live template as well. Let's copy this variable to the class definition as well. Press OK and try out the live template now. Notice that when we type a name on this line, the IDE automatically fills the same value on line 7, since both of these are represented by the same variable name in our live template. Let's now create another variable for the app bar title as well. Let's call this app bar title. We can also decide where to finally put the cursor after we have finished importing the template. This is done using the end variable. Let's now save this live template and see this in action. We import the live template, enter the value for the first variable name using which the IDE fills all other name values automatically. On pressing the return key, the cursor moves to the next variable, which is the app bar title. Then on pressing the return key again, since our live template has no more variables, the cursor is placed at the position denoted by the end key, which in our case is on line 16. You can learn more about Flutter's live templates on the link provided in the lesson notes.